we're going to go on now. Um, I mean, just, just to highlight a couple of things, I actually, um, <coughs> I note them. We know, we know Oxfam-like certification you're going to get behind it. You're just waiting for the models to come out, but that, that's worth knowing. And Sphere is always going to remain voluntary. Did it, is, that, is that correct? Yeah, so what Sphere is basically saying, Sphere is not objecting to certification. In fact, it doesn't even have any <coughs> objections to organizations using Sphere in certification processes. Yeah. But the Sphere project itself will you know, promote the standards on a voluntary basis to ensure maximum access to the mm. maximum number of actors out there, mm. all the way down to the community level and so on and so forth, where mm. certification is really going to be a very difficult concept. Brilliant. That's, that's really helpful. Thank you. Well, we'll move on to uh, another NGO, another NGO that, um, uh, yes, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> you're next. The oh, I if I may, <laughs> if, I, if I may say so, has a. I, I'm so sorry, Sandrine. You're you're last it's on okay. the bill, um, but I put you next. Okay. I, I'll tell you why I put you next That's because right. I just thought it would be interesting yeah. for MSF t to follow Oxfam International. I, I'm so sorry. Oh. I've kind no of no <laughs> is that okay? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I know. Totally I'm sort of, I, I don't mean to set up a, a cat fight or anything, but uh, <laughs> I'm let's, sure do it. Let's, <laughs> do it. let's go for it. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thanks. I'm, I'm uh, hoping I've got so many things I want to say. I'm hoping I can say it all in the time, but I'll, I'll try and be brief. I mean, uh, for us, okay, first I'll, I'll just say that, um, uh, so MSF, of course, we are um, uh, part of the system. In fact, we're really quite a major part of the system, um, but we like to think that we, are, uh, we play also a little bit of an outsider role. Um, and so, um, just to you know, uh, come back on our original position on Sphere, uh, we followed the Sphere process uh, uh, way back in the early uh, 2000s. And um, after the first round, really decided uh, not to be part of the, the um, second round uh, that started in 2002, mainly because we felt that Sphere really reduced humanitarian action to purely technical and um, very kind of mechanistic response mm. and lacked really the bigger picture which is all about humanitarian relief within a more political context um, and in addition that it sort of neglected the bigger picture on protection issues and so on. So I think we still stand on that, on, on that principle um, or, or on that thought. Um, but we, um, just to start on the standards, I think, I mean for us really if we look at the moment, we're, uh, myself and uh, Sean, who's in the audience, are working on a project for the executive committee of MSF looking at uh, emergency response capacity of the humanitarian system. And one of the big things that uh, we've been looking at is the over-bureaucratization of the system, um, the lack of flexibility, the lack of responsiveness, the fact that it takes some agencies up to three months to provide then quite partial service, uh, the whole bureaucratization of the UN, uh, the lack of operationality of many agencies where they've subcontracted to such a level that actually the people on the ground are virtually, uh, you know, very thin on the ground. There's plenty of people in headquarters, but actually very few people on the ground. Um, and we feel that actually that capacity of responding in a flexible and location-specific way has really been eroded in this in in the system and part of it uh, is due well we're investigating why that is and how that works but but what we see is that actually um, these bureaucratic processes are, are are pushing a lot we feel we think that um, actually donors have a lot to do with it and we suspect that processes like the certification process are actually donor led um, I'd be very interested to see how the people, uh, community effect, uh, disaster affected people or conflict affected people can be part of any certification process. I mean, that denies <coughs> any kind of power relations and uh, uh, nefarious motives that people may have and presumes they're all innocent and, and happy to, uh, uh, and able to judge uh, technical standards. So I think that's kind of a, a un very unrealistic approach, and really that certification is is very donor-led approach. Um, what we see as well, I mean, I think um, 
we have to say that we're not against standards, and MSF is very uh, has its own huge, uh, big books uh, with all kinds of protocols and procedures. So we're also very standard driven internally. Um, and we found, I mean, when we were recently in, in South Sudan, for example, uh, when we tried to assess whether uh, the humanitarian system was doing its job, when the people on the ground were trying to work out, you know, are people in this refugee camp receiving enough to drink, they were using the sphere standards as a reference. Um, and it's, I think, you know, it has to remain voluntary and uh, the reference has to remain, um, uh, it, it, it is very useful, I think, for humanitarian on the workers on the ground to have technical reference points. But let's keep it at that. Um, and, you know, what is, uh, a standard in a place like Haiti or in DRC where you've got endemic levels of poverty with peaks of emergencies uh, where you know you have IDP camps or uh, displaced persons camps actually <coughs> uh, receiving better standards than the local population you know that really demands a very location specific standard similarly in Syria where you've got a national uh, for the Syrian refugees where you've got a national response in Turkey, <coughs> the Turkish government standards are from way beyond what humanitarians could dream to do, especially now with the really uh, restricted funding. So, you know, let's not try and standardize everywhere. Let's have a reference point, but keep ourselves flexible and location specific. Um, oh, I think I've said all I need to say. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, just on the last, um, I, I think just on the issue of um, certification, uh, I, th I think whilst we can say that we, are, we agree that standards are important and they're a good reference point, I think on certification we really feel that there is a kind of who's in and who's out cartel. Um, uh, we sometimes question ourselves whether we're part of the cartel and what our responsibility is as such a huge... Uh, uh, organization, I think we're in the top five, definitely uh, dominating in the medical sphere, so we also have to look at our own responsibility there. Um, but I think, um, you know, we would definitely count in the skeptics that Philip uh, uh, outlined, the arguments that he outlined there. Um, I also would question, you know, the host government uh, uh, motives and uh, relationship to the humanitarian community in many cases, in particular conflict cases, you know, the host government isn't, is actually blocking humanitarian access to certain populations because of political motives. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, putting everything in the host government hands is also quite a problematic uh, approach. And I don't think that saying that we come certified would actually allow greater access. I think that's, <coughs> that's actually not a good approach. Um, I think we should be looking, I mean, if you look at the northern Syria, for example, um, so yes, there are a few of us from the, uh, you know, traditional system who are there uh, working in very difficult circumstances and doing a small amount of, of humanitarian response, but the big responders are local responders, our diaspora groups, our activist groups, maybe they aren't uh, signed up to the humanitarian principles. But um, they certainly are learning them, I think, on the ground. <laughs> um, and they are providing a significant support. So um, I guess that's, that's our, that's our uh, view, is that I, we really don't want to be seen as a closed shop. Uh, we want to allow for new and fresh uh, initiatives. Um, and I think, you know, we can, uh, you know, the aims of certification, which are about having a stronger... Uh, uh, focus on the principles and more accountability from people, um, you know, are definitely laudable, and that's not uh, what we're against. But we're against this kind of uh, uh, club uh, approach. Um, so, all right, I'll leave it at that, and uh, look forward to the discussion. Sandra, thank you very much. Uh, that, that was a really excellent I thought reaction based on a huge experience and uh, a lot of good sense I, I've got really an yet another apology to make to you not only did I bump you up in the queue but I, I didn't introduce who you were <laughs> I'm so sorry you just set me off like that <laughs>
Um, I, I really think I ought to do that. I mean, I, I really ought to. So just in case you didn't know, uh, Sandrine started off in community development in Venezuela. She worked for the UN in Eritrea and Tanzania. Uh, she's got ex extensive experience in the Middle East, working with the ICRC in Jerusalem, Beirut. Uh, she joined MSF two years ago and is based in the UK <coughs> office. She's a member of the MSF International Bureau's Humanitarian Advocacy and Representation Team, which supports operations through analysis, advocacy, and networking. Sandrine, uh, just to highlight one or two of the points you made, um, MSF are not against standards, but you think they should be voluntary. And uh, you made two interesting points about um, uh, you know, your points about how important you felt the the uh, beneficiary population were when it came to uh, certification and how important the host government is. Sandrine's saying that actually that assumes that there are always benign and apolitical and I think she's made the point that we probably all accept that they're not always. So <coughs> I think that's, that's helpful. Sandrine, thank you very much. Hugo, I'm, you're next, and I'm. I'm going oh, well, I know. <laughs> I know. There's not much. There's not much left. There's, uh, there's not much first. left. <laughs> I will introduce Hugo. In case you didn't know who Hugo is, 